it's the day after I got back from Cuba and I weighed myself five times because the scale says that I didn't gain. But how is that possible? I don't know, my sister's theory is that we sweated enough to um, negate any gain, but I don't know. Ordinarily, I would see a gain immediately when I come back from vacation. So I don't know, wish me luck. Hey y'all, I'm um, just leaving my Weight Watchers meeting and um, this week I was up 0.6, but that is still one pound below my target. So um, for those of you who, I know we have some new subscribers. So just to get everybody caught up, on my journey, I um, am in my six week ma six week maintenance period, and so I have to maintain within two pounds, and I am one pound under uh, my target. But I was up 0.6 from the last time I weighed in. But the good news is that the good news for me mentally is that this um, 0.6 included um, my trip to Cuba. Um, so that means that I survived that trip, which I knew that I had because when I got back, I've pretty much been getting on the scale regularly and um, was very pleased um, at what I saw. So because I just thought that I had gained, oh my gosh, just everything, the yeah <laughs> and not that we really over over eight but you know how that is when you're on vacation, you're just not quite as mindful. So anyway, <clears throat> Um, I think that I have, she marked it on my book because I'm like, how many more weeks do I have to, I mean, this is going to be a lifetime, but I'm just saying I have three more weigh-ins before I can hit that lifetime status. So she marked it on my book and, um, my total down, yeah, to recap for um, the new subscribers, I'm down 27.2 this week and I joined Weight Watchers in November, mid-November. Um, and I did the uh, traditional program going into the meeting, every into the center every week for a meeting. And my sister lost about the same amount. She joined um, the same time I joined, but she did the at home. Um, and we have a, a video out there doing a comparison uh, between doing it at home versus doing it um, the traditional way. So you can check out that video to see um, our thoughts on the program. But anyway, I'm hungry now. And um, I had been, when I leave my <clears throat> meeting, what I had been doing is stopping at Panera and getting a souffle and going over to my mom's. This is, Saturday morning is usually when I visit with them, my parents' house. Um, but I just called her and she said she wasn't really in the mood for a souffle from Panera and really I'm not either. Um, but I've noticed with myself recently, um, that I really am not drawn to a lot of, uh, fast food, you know, Subway, the thought of Subway completely grosses me out. And you know, I was a regular at Subway. That was part of my weekly rotation. Thought of Subway just completely grosses me out right now and um, McDonald's, none of that sounds good. The only thing that really does sound good is Panera. Um, I really do like their Mediterranean egg white, but I'm also on a financially fit journey as well, which I'm going to do another video on that today later on. Um, just trying to be more frugal, and I'll explain all that in that video, but um, I, <clears throat> as I was driving down the um, highway, I'm like, okay, do I really want to go and spend like six bucks by the time I get a sandwich and drink at Panera? or just stop at the grocery store and just pick up something. I'm going right straight to my parents' house so I can, if I get like a frozen veg, uh, breakfast or something, I can just pop it in their microwave or something. So I am at, at Publix about to see what I can find for breakfast. And that the thought of that just sounds so much better than stopping anywhere else that I can think of. So um, let's see what I can find. Okay, <clears throat> okay. I actually bypassed well, I did look at the breakfast entrees and none of that looked good to me. So I think that I am going to get a one of these sandwich lean cuisines. Um, I think those are like eight or nine points. Um, and maybe do that with an egg, which I know may sound um, really disgusting to some people, but I do have eggs with everything. We've mentioned that before. Um, but yeah, let's see what I get. Maybe 
be a burrito. Okay, I lied. You know what I forgot about? McDonald's hash browns. Those are always good. <laughs> Those don't disgust me. So I am at McDonald's to get some coffee and a hash brown. I did get a breakfast burrito um, at Publix. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Let me keep you all on for some accountability here. <laughs> good morning. Thank you for choosing McDonald's. Hi, yes. Can I have a, a medium coffee with two creams and a hash brown? I'm sorry? A medium coffee with two creams and a hash brown. Yes. Thank you. You didn't want any sugar? No, thank you. Okay, so get some cream? Yes. Alright. So, $2.16. I'm going to add that to my app um, under restaurants. Again, I okay, I'm um, in their subdivision now. And one thing that I wanted to acknowledge is how I felt when um, <laughs> I uh, was told that I had gained 0.6. And the reason that I want to talk about it is that losing weight is easy. That's the easy part. Minimize how but difficult it is to reach, lose weight. I'm just uh, saying that... Weight, um, maintaining it can be just the as odds difficult are not as very losing. great that you're going to stay right on that target weight you know our bodies change every day every you know all throughout the day so your weight weight fluctuates naturally just with natural body bodily functions so and weight watchers acknowledges that which is why they have a two pound range that is considered your target weight I have to change my mindset from when I get on the scale wanting to see a loss to being okay with staying the same or gaining within that two pound range. It may sound like a simple thing, but it requires a huge mindset shift for me anyway. And I'm just realizing it. I've been losing weight for so long, I don't want to see any gain. <laughs> but I also don't want to continue to, to lose either. I just would love to just stay right on that, right on the dot. So, yeah, that's just something that I'm going through. If anyone else can identify with that, or have you know has experienced that then you know let me know I may actually do a search on people that are new to their target weight range just to see the um, emotions and different things their thought the way that they think and yeah just how they're dealing with that you would think that once you hit the target oh you know you're home free that's the easy part no, I think that actually losing was easier because you, you know, for me, I just stayed in that grind of losing. It's still a grind, but it's a different grind now. It's, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. Now, as far as the points, now, you recall that they wanted me to add six points to my daily. I can't say that I didn't do that because, to be honest, since the trip i have been i have really slacked off on tracking at all i'm going to start back starting today because i have a new week in my planner so i'm starting fresh i'm very particular about things like that i won't start in the middle of a week on the planner anyway <laughs> uh just one of those little michelle isms but <clears throat> yeah so i'm sure that with the eating and drinking in Cuba that really accounted for the additional points that I'm I was supposed to be eating um, to try to figure out my new target uh, point daily point target so this will be really the first week that I will diligently try to figure out how many points I really can add and not gain you know outside of that two pound range yeah I don't know what to do <laughs> honestly <laughs>